so thank you for uh, joining is like the first uh, event yeah thanks the for first uh, session of course <laughs> like yeah my pleasure I, i'm used to saying sessions so everything i do <laughs> is a session in berlin yeah um yeah in it's late <laughs> it's late <laughs> it's cold it, it's it's we're in berlin mm -hmm. and yeah and we we have some some paintings behind us right yep mm -hmm. do you know anything about it <laughs> yeah um so i just launched my latest exhibition this weekend it's entitled uh fractures stroke fractions um and yeah it's a series of portraits and uh of, of hands and uh yeah we've you can see some of them behind us mm -hmm. Um, it's on show for the rest of the month in Oslo Cafe Bar. So I paint primarily in acrylic. Um, I do some work in uh, oil pastels as well. And just the textures you can get, I just find... I also just really like working with my hands a lot, to be honest. I prefer, mm -hmm. I prefer that. I mean, I have done, worked with some digital things in the past and I have tried doing some collage and stuff. And sometimes I think about incorporating it into what I'm doing with portraiture and with hands and such. But... Uh, yeah, this is where I'm at at the moment. This seems to be the most enriching and most effective way. <laughs> so, and for those that they don't, cannot see. So we have some paintings, portraits. Mm -hmm. Most of the portraits are, uh, I think, your face, right? Uh, no, well, there's uh, one small one of me and then another of me over here. Yeah. Uh, this one, I think it's in the shot. You can maybe see that. Uh, it looks a little like like me, but it's actually my brother. And then uh, I have a couple of friends who are featured as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I also do portraits mm -hmm. on canvas. Um, oil, usually not acrylics like I you, see, but okay. um, so because I want to not finish anything, that's the <laughs> whole purpose. Right, okay. To punish myself. <laughs> um, yeah, I also did some, I do sometimes acrylics, uh, but... I don't know. I like the the material. I don't know. And this is like the it's creating paint portraits, which many times I think that it doesn't appeal. I'm talking about my works, not about your. Maybe you feel the same thing, right? Um, it doesn't appeal to most people because the faces that I do, like sometimes they're self portraits, sometimes people that I've seen, uh, they don't care about this. Yeah. about all the the person who is depicted and it's not for me it's also is not about the person who is depicted this i have i create my ideas about where to focus or what to see you know and but then it's yeah it's a difficult thing to in quotes to sell right so yeah for sure i've definitely <laughs> that consideration has crossed my mind quite a few times and initially perhaps it was one reason to start with hands um because hands are a bit more general they don't really have so much well i mean they have identity for sure but they're not as kind of obvious as to who who the hands belong to um but in the end of the day i don't know i feel for me the face just as as humans we find it the most expressive the most the easiest to kind of convey emotion with and whilst hands i do find evocative i just feel the end of the day you can't get you can't really beat a good portrait for expressing emotion um that said i mean i remember when i first i came to berlin as a visit and i stayed in a flat in neukölln uh just an airbnb thing and i remember seeing this portrait the, the guy had in the wall and it was just a really beautiful portrait and i didn't really necessarily think I mean, maybe it crossed my mind but i didn't really necessarily think so much about um who is this person in the portrait i just was appreciating the play of light or whatever it was maybe the composition so yeah so this is a friend of yours yeah so is it important to you that is this person there um i would say of primary importance to me is that i know the person in the portrait because i've tried i've tried working from references of strangers before and somehow I find it much more difficult to, I don't know. I mean, I guess part of it is that I know the person's face and I've sort of unconsciously recorded a lot of the details in my head. Um, but that said, it's just, I don't know, like it's sort of in a portrait, you're almost trying to catch the, the 3d effect of their face. And if you know the full 360 of their face, not that I have it, not, I don't have a photographic memory or anything, but if you, if you kind of, 
already have that image in your head then i think it helps whereas if you just have sort of one still image of somebody you've never met then you're just you're seeing that one perspective of them and you know nothing else about them so i mean there's that and then there's also just i feel like to me the you know i work from photo references mostly i back in 2018 i remember was i was working from from life um uh, my not this brother but my other brother um uh sat for me for a really long time my girlfriend also did <laughs> and uh there is definitely something to be said for working directly from life that is interesting but um but yes yeah, so it's mostly photo references these days just mostly for convenience and you can also pull them into photoshop and play with the the levels and the the saturation and such anyway sorry i'm going on a bit of a tangent here but <laughs> to me um the whole process from take like well deciding the lighting then taking the image and then maybe some edits you might do in the computer that's all part of the it's not just when you pick up the paintbrush so to me the, the most of the, the the photo references are ones i've taken myself so to me i see that as kind of part of the process yeah for me it's like every time i do is like i'm always thinking you know i'm doubting myself right so mm. i'm doubting also the whole decision of doing the whole subject matter then mm. of course i have some ideas like i keep a lot of notes of what exactly i want to do you know and some observations some tricks yeah um but then yeah you need actually you need also a driving force you know some kind of energy that makes you keep doing it mm -hmm. Do you, I don't know, do you, like, there are some, I have some, a lot of self-portraits that I started and never finished. Okay. Because it was like a, it's like, it's an exploration also, right? So, yeah. like a self-portrait is always, it's not always capturing the moment, but it's also, I want to see myself differently. Yeah. Right? So, then uh, you try these different brass strokes and you erase, you do erase always. Yeah. What do you think? Do you do this or <laughs> do you go the same way? yeah i mean the way the way i've been thinking about my work a lot lately is just that um seeing each piece even the the, the bigger pieces where i've spent much longer on all the way down to the, the the quick studies just seeing them each as an attempt so never think never putting so much pressure on myself that this is going to be my masterwork or whatever uh and and i think that's a much healthier approach because um i mean what's that quote they say like uh art is never finished only abandoned and uh well a side note there i, I do think that um a lot of the times a lot of the time i'm working on a one of these bigger portraits or bigger pieces i have the temptation to overpaint and kind of go into too much unnecessary detail and then it's the most frustrating thing in the world to see a photo you took of the the piece you know, a couple of days earlier before you'd done all that extra work and kind of go, oh damn, it was much better than <laughs> the, there was just a certain freshness or a certain looseness about it. And now I've kind of tightened it all up and whilst there is more detail in, it doesn't have as much life as it used to. So I'm trying to get a bit better at that. And um, anyway, where was I going with that? I don't know. I just, you know, you, cause you could just keep going. You could just keep painting and keep painting. But I feel like knowing how to just be like, this is as good as this one's going to get. I'm not really improving it by adding more and then moving on to the next thing. So to me, it's kind of, it's all about the process of improving. I'm, I'm nowhere near as good as I would like to be. So I kind of just see each, each piece is just an attempt to, to get to the next level, you know? Yeah. Do you think that, uh, now you, you finished this series of paintings, uh, did you discover something new, something you're going to do for the next series of works? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that I've necessarily finished the series because, I mean, the the three portraits you can see there are kind of um, the the bulk of this show, I guess the the main feature I would say, and I'm kind of just really looking forward to seeing where the next portrait will go because I imagine I'm going to take much the same approach, um, but it's kind of I feel like with each one I'm kind of um, shifting the balance a, a little more between the different elements, between the kind of the straight up representation, the uh, the sort of fractured um, kind of 
portrait thing you see going on to different degrees, different in different fashions. Um, so I feel like I'm just kind of um, learning how to to balance all those elements a little better. And I feel like the final portrait I did, which is the one that we're featuring, is the one where I've hit that balance the best. So yeah, I, I guess it's just going to be kind of continuing along that route. Maybe. Maybe the one thing I would like to change the most is to add a bit more dynamism. I feel like it could use a little bit more movement in this sort uh, of cocktail of elements. It feels a little bit static, you mean? Yeah, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This uh, element of move, yeah, the illusion of movement. Yeah. Um, how much time did you did it take you to finish this work? Um, I find it really. People always ask me this, and I find it really hard to know exactly when because I don't really kind of start a timer and and. And, and count the hours but um this one in terms of uh not in terms of hours but in terms of the sort of the days. calendar yeah, yeah in terms of days um was actually the quickest one i think i started it maybe around the 7th of march and it must have been finished let's say the 20 i don't know the 25th or something like that because i certainly had a few days you know varnishing and framing and such it's so it's in a month yeah it came around pretty quickly but i mean i guess that's also maybe tied in with what i'm talking about in terms of like gradually knowing what to do with the series the first one was much more all right this is this is fresh territory i'm not sure exactly what i'm doing here there are some projects that they i put them in the ongoing prog uh, projects mm -hmm. or the it it never stops they, they don't have an end Right. So, for example, a series of self-portraits, it never yeah. ends. All yeah. my life, I will be keep doing self-portraits. Yeah, I like that and idea. It, and it will be like a, on my website, a category of yeah. self-portraits, a sub-page. But that's such an exciting <laughs> idea that you can sort of, you know, look back when you're 70 and see the kind mm. of the progression, you know. Mm. And um, it's like a journal also. Yeah. But there is like also the the nudes. I paint also nudes yeah. on canvas. And there is also this, this is like the, Berli I say Berlin nude because I'm in Berlin. Right. Uh, but then, of course, there is the, the Finite series. Okay. So I also have this kind of categorization in my mind. Yeah, yeah. So I, this is a, when it's a Finite, it should, it should have an end. Yeah. So before I even start, I make the plan. It should oh, be, okay, well. let's say, 10, 15 paintings because mm -hmm. they fit into this kind of concept. Right. And I imagine a space. What's you know? the latest one you did as a sort of finite series? Uh, I'm doing uh, actually a series of, of portraits. It's called Pair Portraits. Okay. So it's two po two portraits together of the same person. And it's like, I see. you see the difference. Oh, you said yeah. pair portraits. Pair, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and these are like two two paintings as when this consider one artwork. So, okay. and I try to show some kind of filters, like digital elements mm. that they, we see between these two images. I see. Uh, so it doesn't matter who is this person, but I... Every time I have some people that they pose for me, mm. and yeah, it's it's finite because I showcase the different types of digital elements in a way. Okay. So and it's traditional oil painting. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's like it. it's about the influence basically of the digital image to a traditional portrait portrait tour. Right. Yeah, that makes me think a little bit of. Um, do you know the portrait artist uh, Ben Ashton um, he's a English painter and he does this kind of really amazing very traditional uh, oil painting I think what's the the period um, I think it's Regency period it's called um, but then the he has all these kind of digital distortions which are <laughs> have been following him for a while and over the years they're getting more and more wild and I particularly like his kind of chromatic um where he's kind of got this kind of split color thing you know almost like a yeah like when a, a digital image is sort of glitching or something like that and it's yeah quite the um the juxtaposition to see this like really traditional style of painting with these really digital elements i like it um so well the reference was another way that's kind of come full circle um to the portrait service doing in 2018 um the reference is actually based on an image. I think my friend took it. It was a panorama of the exhibition opening in Aberdeen in Scotland. And um, I must have moved whilst he was taking this panorama. 
and it created this kind of crazy effect where there's this kind of glitchy panorama thing going on and if you look in the i've got a portfolio of studies there there's actually quite a few there which are based on these sort of panorama glitches and uh yeah i guess that led me onto the idea of having this sort of fragmented portrait because i like the idea that you're kind of getting um it's almost kind of almost cubist or something like that where you're kind of getting different elements of a of a 3d face kind of all mashed together yeah um, i i know what you we're talking about if you have any phone you 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 definitely had this kind of problem yeah, yeah. right it's I love it. too I fast or too slow i think it's really interesting but uh, but the, what is interesting also with this kind of uh trick is not that the image is also it's interesting right? it's like it's a monster mm. it's like <laughs> you can you can actually make it and it's like a abdomination right so yeah, yeah. so but the interesting thing is you once you've seen once or twice of these kind of images you understand what's happening yeah like you if you have phones you understand you can see the face yeah you can ignore the the glitz yeah you can ignore of this and more or less you can see the face and how it was supposed to be yeah so even though the glitz is the the in interesting form yeah uh the the goal is the, you actually you ignore the glitz at some point yeah and then you so, just start thinking then, about the different parts of the face so or, yeah, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. then it's only the path yeah and then the goal then you the more you look at it the the more it doesn't matter also yeah that's an interesting perspective so, think, of yeah. course the way you deliver stuff the way that it's, it's also what matters right we actually point sure. the way we deliver stuff mm -hmm. uh but just uh, yeah it's a very interesting thing like this is why because we I, in my opinion like even when I do portraits and figurative and I do models, uh, uh, figurative things, uh, it's very distorted. Yeah. Everything is like uh, absolutely not real in my mm. perception. I, I, I understand that I stretch a lot of stuff. I change the colors. I change almost everything. There is actually, I, I find it difficult to find things that are actually similar to what I was has a reference okay. <laughs> and I don't care so much. So, yeah. uh, so like, yeah, this is why, yeah, this is why I try not to do friends <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so yeah. they don't complain and I don't feel like the, the ads of, uh, yeah. I suppose that's why I was just talking to somebody about, they were asking about, um, you know my reference uh, my reference images and i i'm i suppose a lot of them are me there are a lot, a lot of self portraits and it, uh, honestly yeah part of it is is that if i'm attempting these sort of distorted things these sort of glitchy as as you say the sort of ab abominable so abominable sort of images if that's the right word um yeah you're kind of concerned if you're doing it with someone else that they're going to be like what why have you made me into this horrible monster or something like that i mean maybe over time i'll sort of become more comfortable with it uh i always think of that um francis bacon quote where he says um i think he performs his he prefers to work from photo images because if he's performing the sort of distortions you know like how his, his images had a similar kind of idea i suppose of like different aspects of the person's face all kind of mashed together he'd be worried that it would be perceived as a wound. I think that's how, what he says. Um, and yeah, I guess that's how I think of it, that I worry that people might think, I don't know, think something negative about it. But perhaps, you know, I'm too worried about that because at the end of the day, I think a lot of people are just happy to have some sort of involvement with the, the creation of the piece. And as long as it's not absolutely horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose with this series, I've kind of hopefully achieved a, a degree of that distortion without it being coming across as too sort of gruesome or whatever you know i started a small portrait of a friend of mine mm. and i made him like a zombie okay i did the name to make him like a zombie but like somehow you know um somehow somehow you have an idea in your mind right that you have to paint someone in a specific way okay and it's like um you have one pat's Look, the initial idea is one small form, and then I just complete the rest of the part. Sure. So it's like it's like a puzzle, you know. Mm. So some things you know, some things you don't know, and then they just fit in. And what I think I also posted it the halfway. That's almost ready on Instagram. Okay. We can even show it also there. Yeah. It's a small thing, 
but uh, yeah, in in my in a way, it's it's like a statement also, right? So it's maybe I how I feel when I see his face, or <laughs> um, it's strange actually. It's strange, and also many times when I do the portraits, I try not to see the face. Okay. Try to cover part of the face so I don't see the face. Okay. So like the the expression that they have influences me. Like so this person, for example, in in this case is he's a stand-up com- comedian. Mm. So he's a funny person. So he's a public figure. So you can say that I made the portrait of a stand-up comedian. Mm-hmm. That's ugly. <laughs> you there is there is because i don't you know in a way the 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 fact that he appears always smiling is there right so and i put it there somehow Mm -hmm. so and also it's part of the work right okay even you know that's that's it 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 should be there but uh it doesn't have to be a sexy pose yeah you know something that people very quickly recognize it is him right yeah so so it's another way so it it can actually deliver something different right so um yeah this is like this is for me is like the the possibilities of a portrait of a face uh are very strange you know there is yeah. and i th- i feel that there are a lot of stuff that haven't been done this yeah. is why yeah why i'm trying to in a way experiment and sometimes you know of course fail or i mean would you say it's quite often clear to you what your intention is with, you know, when you start a portrait or would you say you see it more as a experimental kind of opportunity that you don't really, you don't know how it's going to end up? I feel that uh, the, the, the human face in the portrait in a, on a canvas, like because it has also the possibility of a space behind, you can actually have like, you know, a landscape behind a, a face. All of this, like the way you did it also, right, right in one of the paintings. Also, most of them, you yeah. have uh, always something behind. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has the maximum depth of information you can have yeah. in inside a painting. Sure. So, so the possibilities are, are, you are on the maximum range of possibilities, either in form and in concepts. Mm-hmm. So, and, but at the same time, I see that, the majority of people end up doing the same thing on a very narrow part of okay. the, the ads, you know. And so, so I see that everything I do, there is a kind of experimentation and there are some, like I would say, a series of works that I'm very, like I try to make, you have to do it. You have to be, to make 10 works that are very similar. They have a specific concept yep. so people can understand it. Mm-hmm. Like if you do one or two paintings and then the third one is totally different yeah. and different, then people will not understand what you're doing. Yeah. This is what I've seen. So you, you are forced to repeat yourself at least for an exhibition. Mm. Right. But then that gives you the opportunity to, as I was saying with these ones, kind of refine what it is you're trying to do. Maybe at first you kind of, you know, the sort of elements that you want to bring in or the sort of approaches, what kind of thing you're trying to address, whether that's kind of the surface or, you know, just like distortions or kind of illogical elements. Um, But if you only do one or two, then like you say, you don't really have the opportunity to kind of play around and be like, oh, okay, this is, I need to do more of this or mm-hmm. this isn't really working. Maybe I'll pull this back or, you know what I mean? And at the end, in the end, like, are you, are you satisfied uh, with, um, with you finishing the works and the yeah. time it took you from, I would um, say, um, out of everything I've done so far, I'm the most satisfied I have been. Um, that said, I feel I don't know. In the past, I feel like I've kind of maybe been too kind of happy with where I got to and then sort of thought, all right, I'm going to gonna sort of coast along for a little bit. I don't need to, you know, give myself a bit of a break. But I don't know what it is with this series. I feel kind of more energized by it. I'm kind of like, all right, that was pretty good, but now the next thing, you know? Um, yeah, so I would say I'm satisfied, but also kind of excited to get started on the next thing. That's nice. So, yeah, my name is Thomas Thor Simon. 
I'm a painter from Scotland, based in Berlin, um, mostly working with portraiture, um, although I'm also fascinated by hands. And uh, yeah, I've um, been painting since, I guess I kind of started properly, maybe like 2015, 2016, um, did some, some lessons at Gray School of Art in Aberdeen. Um, I actually studied architecture before that, but then sort of changed focus and uh, yeah, um, sort of developing my style as time goes on. I feel like I've kind of found a territory at last, which, you know, I think a lot of people struggle with. I certainly did for a long time, but portraiture and hands and kind of playing with um, elements of kind of illogical kind of dreamlike sort of elements is, is really what I'm trying to do, trying to express emotion with portraiture, but then kind of heighten that emotion and that atmosphere with kind of uh, surrealist elements, I suppose you could say. I'm Miltos Espudis. I'm the, the host of this podcast. I hope also for the next episode. Uh, so this is our first uh, episode. And yeah, what, uh, who am I? Uh, I'm a painter from Greece, Thessaloniki. Uh, started painting um, my father is a painter my mother my brother everyone is like I'm right. from a family okay. of artists and I've been in Berlin for eight plus years now mm. uh, freelancing trying to finish some uh, paintings and it's I find it so difficult because I I, I can never satisfy myself and at the same time I do a lot of events that bring people together, like sketching together, live drawing sessions, and even comedy shows. You should go along to the live sessions. Yeah. They're really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you for joining. And Thank you for having me. We can have even bring other artists. We can do just random discussions. The place might be good. I don't know. Sounds it's good. a nice actual place uh, <laughs> after work. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Talk about art. Yeah.